Welcome. Driving is a very complicated task, which must be broken down into the fundamentals. Physics is an essential part of driving a vehicle. Before you graduate, you must know adequate physics terms, common driving knowledge, ordinary math terms, and of course, a good attitude. In this class, you will learn from the most experienced driving teacher in the tri-state area. Welcome to the 1B Physics Driving School. Your journey has just begun. Reaction time is the amount of time it takes you to react to something. Reaction time red has a reaction time of 0.2 seconds. How could we demonstrate reaction time? Time by my reaction. No, no, hold on. We will use a ruler and drop it and measure our distance to solve for our reaction time. Very good, Cole. Let's try it. Drop your ruler, Randy, call a ruler at 50 centimeters. Remember, gravity is 9.8 meters slash second squared. What was his reaction time? We need to use the distance equals half acceleration times time squared plus velocity initial times time. <clears throat> Correct in mind though. Let's plug them in. 50 equals 1 half 9.8 times squared plus zero times time. Just gonna keep on plugging them in. What do we do next, Cole? Um, we have to, we have to find the square root. Yup. So T, what did you, you get for T, Cole? I got 3.19. Correct. What did you get, Will? I don't know what Cole got. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Another important part of driving in physics is measurement and error. If you measure an object wrong, you have a higher chance of missing the corresponding problems. There are two types of error, systematic and random. Explain the two types. Systematic error cannot be correct by calculating. An example is for getting to set your timer. Random error can be avoided by corrections or calculations. Examples, measuring an object that, has, that is four millimeters and saying it's four centimeters. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, you got those wrong, buddy. You need to flippy flop them. Very good, Cole. Velocity. Well, it's how fast something is going. Actually, velocity is speed with direction. Very good, Cole. Let's do a problem. The equation for constant velocity is change in distance over time. If speedy Sammy travels 35 meters in five seconds, what is his velocity? Well, you would do 35 divided by 5, and you would get 7 meters per second. Hmm, well actually, I got negative 37. Cole was right. The next type of velocity is average. The formula is velocity average equal distance total divided by time total. And if there is constant acceleration, you can use velocity average equals velocity final plus velocity initial divided by 2. So let's try our problem. Driving Danny drove 100 meters in 25 seconds, then 50 meters in 30 seconds. What was his velocity? I did 100 meters plus 50 meters divided by 25 seconds plus 30 seconds. Substantially, I got 150 divided by 55, which is 2.7 meters per second. Correct. Let's try another problem. Constantly accelerating Ari was constantly accelerating at 1 meter per second squared. Ari started at 50 meters per second and ended at 100 meters per second. What's his average velocity? So I do 2 divided by 100 plus 50? No. You do 100 plus 50 divided by 2. And what do you get? I don't even want to be here. My mom made me take this class. I got 75 meters per second. Correct, Cole. Now let's take a look at the graphing motion. Will, would you like up to would you like to come up here and show us how to graph motion? No! I will! Very good, Cole. What does distance over time, velocity over time, and acceleration show us?
This is over time shown as you accelerate, making the graph become steep over time. The slope shows velocity. Velocity over time shows acceleration at a, at a constant speed. Whether it is positive or negative, the slope might be straight because there is no constant acceleration. Acceleration over time would be a straight line showing acceleration is constant. Nerd. Nice one, Cole. Acceleration is how fast an object is increasing or decreasing their speed. Can acceleration be positive or negative? Neither. No, it can be both. The formula used to find acceleration is acceleration equals velocity final minus velocity initial over time. The other equation is change of velocity divided by time. Let's try a problem. Sporty sports car Sam started at zero meters per second, and after 10 seconds, he increased his speed to 100 meters per second. What was Sammy's acceleration? I did 100 minus zero divided by 10 seconds, and I got 10 meters per second squared. I got that too. Motion is a movement of an object. You use initial velocity, final velocity, time, distance, and acceleration. We can use these in the real world to solve problems. We are going to learn about three formulas to show motion. Velocity final Fred started at zero meters per second. Then he accelerated at a rate of 10 meters per second squared for 10 seconds. What is his final velocity? All right, so first we would use this formula because we're trying to find final velocity. What do you have, Will? I have 10 divided by 200. You're supposed to multiply 10 times 10 for 100 meters per second. Very good, Cole. In the end, you should get velocity final equals 100 meters per second. <clears throat> How far did distance Danny go if he started at zero, then accelerated at a rate of 5 meters per second squared for 15 seconds? What formula will we use? We will use the distance formula. Smart Alec. Cole, what did you get? I got 562.5 meters. Very good, Cole. Arnie the airplane took off and accelerated at a rate of 3 meters per second squared for 2,000 meters. How fast did he end up going? Why are we even learning this? Obviously, so we can learn. Okay, Cole. So what answer did you get? 109.5 meters per second. How did you find that answer? I used the velocity final formula for two times acceleration times distance plus velocity initial. So what was your final answer again? 109.5 meters per second. Correct. I'm on up. When you are going on a curve, there is an outward force pushing you off the curve. The reason you stay on the road is because of friction. The two formulas we will use are velocity equals Centripetal velocity equals 2 pi r divided by time, and centripetal acceleration equals velocity squared divided by radius. Let's try a problem. Curvy road Carson travels around a curvy road with a radius of 5 meters for 10 seconds. What was his velocity? I did 2 times pi, or 2 pi times 5 divided by 10. I ended up with my answer being 3.14 meters per second. What did you get? Will? I got 50. Will, you're really not applying yourself. Accelerating Anne went around a curve with a radius of 2 meters and a velocity of 3 meters per second. What was her acceleration? I use a centripetal acceleration equation. Its acceleration equals velocity squared divided by r. So when I plug the answers in, I got 9 divided by 2, which is 5.5 meters per second squared. Oops, Cole. I think that was wrong. I got 4.5 meters per second. Very good, Will. I guess I am applying myself after all. To conclude this lesson, driving is not a safe task. I hope we can better understand physics so we can all be safer drivers. Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed this class.